What are we doing? Just give it a second. All right, hey, Shalom. Hey, your brother Ari out from GMS Tampa Bay 12 and GMS 13 Rulership 3. Also, GMS 13 Rulership 4, which is my backup channel. Back at you again with another live lesson through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai. And of course, before I start, I'd, I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai Baha Shem Racha Kodash Kohaloyim La Allah Yahweh. Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Racha Kodash. And for those that may not know, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, which the world ignorantly calls God. His true name in the ancient Paleo Hebrew would be Yahweh, which roughly translates to He is or He exists. The existing one, He to be, if you will. All right, Yahweh. And we call on Him in the name, or Bahasham in the name, Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is the name of the only begotten Son, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. And his true name in the ancient Paleo Hebrew roughly translates to he saves or he delivers. Yahweh Shai. Okay. So it's Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Those are the names we call on for salvation. And uh, we call on them in the name of the Holy Spirit, Bahashem Harachak Wadash. And I like to give double honors unto the apostles of GMS, Great Millstone, the men that rule and teach well. Also, salutations to the Akim out there. Do push the word out in truth and sincerity. And uh, to you, brothers and you sisters that just may be listening and learning. May Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai Barak Adam unto you as well. And again, it's your brother Ariel from the Tampa Bay camp, and you know, Lord willing, this is edifying. Um, just want to kind of just go touch the subject real quick. You know, as we approach these final moments of these final hours of these final days, we are basically bearing witness to the downfall of a great kingdom, America. And on top of that, as we as we watched it fall, um, you know, we have to go through the the heartaches of a fallen kingdom as well too you know we have to go through you, you know maybe not having enough money or maybe getting sick or whatever you're losing your job or whatever you know whatever your situation may be you know I, another brother's going to something similar to that right um which will let's get that scripture in the book of first corinthians you know brothers know i like to bring it a lot a lot but it's just something that that it's always a scripture that's always on my mind so i'll read it and we'll talk about it. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. And really at that, you know, what you can look at that as is, you know, if you're going through something, don't think that you're the only brother going through that or something similar to that. No. It's not uncommon that another that somebody else is going through the same thing you're going through. All right. It's really how we accept these judgments that that you know are laid upon us or whatever these situations that are laid upon us is, is how you handle it and how you how do you remove how do you maneuver uh, through these heartaches okay do you automatically get all bent out of shape because something happened or do you accept it for what it is and you thank the lord and then continue to move on with your life and know i know it's hard sometimes it's hard it's easier said than done just to move on after something may have happened but if it's something that's out of your control, you know, we have to just understand then that the Lord is in control. Maybe you are not in control of it, but the Lord is in control of it. And these are the things that we need to remember. Otherwise, excuse me, you're going to end up bugging yourself out out here thinking, is the Lord really dealing with me? Am I, am I wicked? Or you're going to have all these these impure thoughts. And then next thing you know, you out, you, you out of there. You know, we all make mistakes, Okay. We all say things we don't mean, or, or, or maybe you made a mistake and did something you shouldn't have done, or said something you shouldn't have said, or, or, or maybe you and your feelings or emotions or whatever, and you just weren't yourself at that time, all right? And you may have messed up. And it could, and, but these things they lead to uh, uh, experience, which ultimately, uh, 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 you know, how's that one scripture go? Um, I hate to be all over the place, but just give me one second. Um. Let's see. This is Romans chapter 5, verse 3. It says, And not only so, it says, I wrote start verse 2. It says, I, start, I must start at the top. So this is Romans chapter 5 and 1. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, right? We're justified by faith, not by how many laws you keep. Okay? Our faith, that's what really truly matters because we all know that our righteousness is as filthy rags. So it don't ma matter what you've done, what you think you've done for the Lord or 
or the path you think you're walking on or whatever is about your mindset, your faith. Do you really believe in this? Do you really believe that the Lord is go is can possibly give you salvation or are you worthy of it? Maybe not. Okay, we've done so much wicked in our lives. It's almost it's almost a miracle that we're still alive here and the Lord hasn't done all, done away with us. But you know what? The Lord has a purpose for us still being here. We are pushing the word out, right? But that doesn't that not give, give us a reason to get too big for our britches and get all cocky because we're still here pushing the word while a lot of people just fell out or died. No, because the Lord could easily put that upon you. He could destroy you. He could destroy me. Okay? So we have that's the fear of the Lord. We have to keep these things on the on you know at the at the at the foreset of our mind, okay? So so that we stay humble and, and and uh and meek. Otherwise, you might get too you know too cocky or too proud or whatever. The next thing you know, you out of it. So it says Romans chapter five verse one. It says therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with the Most High through our through our Lord Yahweh Hamashiach. Right? We have peace. With Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai through our faith, we we already know we're not perfect, so there's no point in really getting bent out of shape about making a mistake in the past or, or um you did this you or you maybe whatever you know. Those thoughts aren't really profitable, because all that could do is just lead you into a, a a downward spiral into depression or some other psychosis or whatever, man. So the best thing you can do is just charge it all to the Heavenly Father. Whatever burdens you may have, you charge it over to the Heavenly Father. And he'll take care of it for you. And you do that in faith. Right? It says, It says, By whom also we have access by faith into the, this grace wherein we stand. Right? And rejoice in hope of the glory of the Most High. Right? We 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 um we have access by faith into this grace. Okay? In which we stand right now. Because remember, we're in a grace period. And we access this grace period through our faith. If you see how a lot of people have already getting taken out, okay? Well, it's because they really didn't believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai like they should have. And I'm not saying that every person that had died, and especially those that are in the truth. No, because there's some people that are in the truth that may have died. That was the Lord's decision. And we can't call it. The Lord called them back for whatever purposes it may have been. Maybe that person needed to pay for a sin that they committed in a previous life that we don't, we're, we're not wary of. I, who knows? But does that make a per that person not a man of the Lord? Could or could not. We don't really know. But not necessarily. Because we know that people die in the truth. And the Lord speaks about that. And Lord willing, we'll touch on that. But it says. It says, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of, of the Most High. Right? We rejoice in the hope. Because we're doing everything. We're, we're doing what we're supposed to do, are we not? At least we should be. Okay, let's, you know, for argument's sake, say we're doing what we're supposed to do to the best of our ability. And, that, and you know, we can say that, but, you know, the Lord, the Lord says uh, um, rejoice in the hope. Because we hope, we're doing this for the Lord in hopes that the Lord gives us the glory that he promised us. We're doing all this in hopes that the Heavenly Father spares our puny lives, our miserable lives, when he, when he decides to bring hell upon this earth. I'm talking about real hell, not just, just living the day-to-day -day grind here in America. No, I'm talking about real deal, holy field hell. Because that's what's coming. That's what we've been prophesying about. Listen to my videos. I always talk about what's going to happen. Okay, we speak about Jacob's trouble over here at Great Millstone. This is one of the most important prophecies. That's leading to the hour of temptation, the mark of the beast. Which is what? The RFID microchip, which is going to be made mandatory for all you citizens to get in order to take part in society. And if you refuse the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast, guess what? You'll be excommunicated from society. From society, You're not going to be able to take part in it. Okay? Uh, um, you may actually get put into a, 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 an entertainment camp and possibly worse, be put to death. The scriptures talk about this stuff. Okay? And for souls that have to get put to death, the scriptures tell us not to worry about all that. Okay? Don't worry about death. It's not what you think it is. Stop worrying about shit that you, you, you know, just do what I told you to do. And you'll be straight. Okay? But what? We have access to this grace that the Lord has given us uh, by our faith. Okay? And we rejoice, what? In the glory. We, uh, what does it say? It says, and rejoice in hope. Of the glory of God, right? So we rejoice in the hope, all right? We ex the expectation of receiving 
um, the promises. Okay? When you really think about all the things that the Lord has promised his, his people, his chosen people, you can't really wrap your puny mind around it because it's so great. But yet, the Lord has said he's going to give it to us. And I say us, I say humbly because I believe I'm in Israel and I believe possibly I may be of the elect if I continue on to this path. Why else would we be doing this if we didn't believe there was a chance that we'd be of the elect? No, that's in the expectation, the hope. And we rejoice in that. Okay? Romans chapter 5 verse 3, it says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Okay? So when we go through something, we understand that this is part of the story. This is part of the process. And what do we do? We give um, all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh no matter what the situation may be. We might throw out a, a fuck or some sort of explanation, ex expletive. You know, like, God damn, son of a bitch. But then when you kind of gain your morals back, it's like, you know, oh, you know what? Call, call the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Because ultimately the Lord could have killed you or whatever the case may be. could have made it a lot worse. But yet, you know, you're still here. I remember a few years back, um, me and the brother Kwam, we had went to Orlando to do the word with those brothers over there in the Orlando uh, branch, and um, um, I had my park, I had my car parked on the side of the road somewhere in the city, and we did the word, and then I went to go get my car, and the car was gone. All right, and it was like a block party, so they towed the car, so I, my car was towed. And, you know, I may have thrown out a fuck or something like that. But two seconds later, it was like, you know, you call Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh It's all good. You laugh it off. You know, it's like, oh, fuck, here we go. Now I got to find the car. We got to make phone calls. We got to go and get this. We got to gather the money and get the car to impound and do all that. We were laughing the whole time. And again, you know, it's, it's easier when you're around brethren and not around niggas in the world. Because brethren, they're going to treat you like a brother. They're going to treat you like they would want to be treated if, if they were in a similar situation. So what those Orlando brothers did, they made sure there was enough money for me to get the car to impound. They searched, searched out where it could be, found it. We drove me over to the spot, got the shit out the impound. I was able to drive home. I'll be, it was a lot later, later than I expected it to be, but at least I got home, got the brother Kwam home, and everybody got home fine. Even we ate a, a good, decent meal and laughed about it. Okay, but the point is, is, you know, we, we what did it say? And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, right? Why? Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So when you're going through something, it's a suffering process. Okay? And patience and suffering go hand in hand, do they not? Yes, they do. Okay? So when you're going through a tribulation, it works out that patience. So now you're, you're suffering, so now you're, it's like you're working out a muscle. Okay? Well, you got you, no pain, no gain, as the world says, huh? So the same thing goes with this truth. We have to we have to understand that there's, this is the Lord putting you through this for what, whatever purpose it may be. Maybe working out your patience muscle. Okay? So, tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience. Right? So, now you have this, this story that you got. And you can share it with the congregation. You can share it with younger brothers and those in the world that you're trying to teach or whatever the case is. And you can tell the whole story or whatever. And... and, and, and and maybe that person will, will, will learn from your experience as we learn from other people's experiences and our own experiences. That's a good thing. And it says in experience, hope. There's that word hope again. Okay, so when you go through things, you, again, it makes you a wiser person. And so you understand that you're going through this for a, a, a process. As scriptures talk about gold is tried in the fire and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So this is part of the furnace of adversity. This is the proverbial fire that we must go through so we, we can actually avoid the, the literal fire that's going to come in the last days uh, via thermonuclear war. Okay? Because people are going to die in this thermonuclear war that's going to take place uh, uh, not only in the Middle East and other people, but specifically in the United States. The United States is prophesied in the Holy Bible to be destroyed in the nuclear war. A lot of people live here. Okay? And you know what's going to happen to them? They're going to get burnt up in that. So if you don't want to get burnt up in that, then you might want to get burnt up in this proverbial fire, which is the furnace of adversity. And it hurts, yes. Okay? But, again, it is a experience worketh hope. It goes on to say, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of the Most High is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. So, we, we, we know... 
we, yeah, we may sound silly and, and dreamy or whatever, okay? <laughs> when, when people when, when people talk to us, why ain't you why ain't you ain't worried about this? Why ain't you worried about that? Well, we, we have hope and we have faith in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And so the average carnal or natural man, when you have this conversation with them, they're gonna look at you like, oh, I can't be me, man. I got I gotta see it to believe it. And a lot of people do gotta see it to believe it, but we have that expectation, man. We know what it is. At this point, we know, okay, we are, we, it's, we don't know, like, I can tell you exactly what's, but we, we know enough, all right? Just to, say, put it, just to put it broadly, you know, we know enough for us to continue on in this path, no matter what the world says to us, because the world's going to make fun of us, but that's part of the furnace of adversity too, okay, being mocked by the world, being looked at as a you know, a, a, a spectacle. Okay, the foolishness of preaching. The Lord, the, the Lord, the Lord loves that. Okay, people disagreeing with you. People who got something. Always, got, everybody got something to say. Everybody got some, you know. <laughs> and and they're always gonna use you. They're gonna come to you. They're gonna argue with you. They're gonna cut you off when you're trying to explain the scriptures. We all know what it is already, man. We know, we know. All right, but ultimately. This is something that we just have to suffer. Sometimes it be your loved ones that, that give you the most help. It'd be your wife or something like that, or your eldest son, or or your father, or your mother, or your or your blood brother, or your best friend from high school, or, or whatever the case may be. Your 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 drinking buddy from the world. He want to give you all this hell and make fun of you and talk shit about you behind your back. Well, that's a blessing, but it's, it still hurts. But it's something that we have to go through. Okay. It says for for when we were yet with without strength in due time Hamashiach died. For, we we can stop that there. Let's go back to um, First Corinthians ten and thirteen. It says there hath no temptation you taken you but such as is common to man. But the Most High is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape. That ye may be able to bear it. So in other words, the Lord is not going to put a situation. If you be of the elect, let me just preface, preface it there. If you be of the Lord's elect, he's not going to put you in a, situa in a situation which is just going to overtake you. Where you're just going to give up and, and die, curl, curl into a ball and die. No, if you be of the elect, no, you're going to endure whatever tribulation falls upon your table. Whatever comes across your desk, you're going to be able to endure it. It's going to hurt sometimes, but you know what? It's going to make you a better man getting through it, a more wiser man. And plus, we have the understanding of the scriptures on our side, so we can use this understanding to get through whatever situation we find us in. You know, the Lord uh, 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 shows us or puts us through. Because everything we go through, we're, you know, <laughs> we deserve it. But again, if it's something that's just too much for you, don't, the Lord ain't going to put you through it. So that's one thing that can give you a little bit of that can ease your soul a little bit because I know a guy like me sometimes you know Jake worries about shit too much that you don't need to be worrying about this trust in the Heavenly Father he's going to take care of that all these things that you're worrying about the Heavenly Father already knows that you're scared of that shit dog and just don't worry about it so goddamn much and just let the Lord handle it you just focus on the, the duty that the Lord has commissioned to you so if, if you're a prophet if you are out there prophesying in the correct doctrine, then focus on that and do, be the best prophet you can be before the, the lights go out. Okay? Or whatever your lot is in this truth, make sure you're fulfilling it to the best of your servile ability. And then the Lord will, all those things that you're worrying about, the Lord's going to take care of those things for you. He's not going to fucking kill your whole family. Or he could. He can. You understand what I'm saying? That's where the fear of the Lord comes into play. We understand the fear of the Lord. We understand why we fear the Lord. And what the Lord is capable of doing to you and to your family and to your loved ones. To anybody. Okay? To anything. Okay? We've seen too much death, you know, in our, on, on our short lives. We've seen a lot of horrible things. And we know that, that none of us are exempt from the Lord's judgment. So that's kind of like why you were kind of on, on, you know, on edge a little bit, but ease it down a little bit, man. Be, be at ease. Okay. 
you start feeling crazy, just read the scriptures. That'll comfort you. Remember these scriptures. These scriptures are going to get you. These, the understanding of the scriptures is what's going to get you through the hell that's about to come upon this earth. It says, um, it says, um, I read that part again. It says, but God is not faithful. It's like, yeah, but God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, right? But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So the Lord's always going to prov provide that way out. Now, when you find yourself in a situation, that way out, that escape route may not be overly obvious at first. But that's where your faith comes in. You just wait for it. You know it's there. Okay, you know you're not you, you know you're not a, a wicked individual. At least if you're doing doing the work, you know all you brothers that watch these videos, you, you, you know you know what I'm talking about. Because again, this scripture should be going through your mind when you find yourself in this situation. Be like, all right, well the Lord, Lord has put me through this because He knows I can get through it. There's a way to escape it. All right, really, it just starts with your faith. Just blessing the holy name of the Lord. And then whatever situation you find yourself in, the 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 remedy is going to be there some somewhere. Whether you might have to call a brother up for some assistance, or maybe you have some bank account, some some secret bank account that you got hidden away. That now maybe it's the time that I got to start dipping into this one, or you know whatever your situation may be, the Lord is going to provide some sort of relief for you so you can continue to do the work of the Lord and and get your life back on track. Okay, because the Lord's about to wrap this thing up soon. He sees us suffering down here. He hears our prayers. That's why the Lord is clearly... Um, what was I just thinking about? Um, um, oh, yeah. Isaiah. This is Isaiah 33. And there's another one that I, I always quote it and read it sometimes. Isaiah 33 and 6. It says, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And what's, what wisdom and knowledge specifically? The true understanding of these scriptures. Okay, and the utilization of these proverbs in your day-to-day -day life. Okay, because if you know the scriptures, that's wisdom, you know, that's knowledge. Okay, but when you apply these scriptures, that's wisdom and, and, and understanding. So when a time of trouble does come, you may not have a smartphone for you to go and Google search a, a word and like I'm going like no nah, the scriptures that you should know you should know if you be of the elect there are certain precepts that are just should be embedded within your psyche all right these are the are the um the main ones that are going to comfort us in a time of trouble so when you find yourself in a situation you're gonna the, the, the heavenly father is going to bring to your remembrance the proper scripture the proper the proper passage which is going to be your answer to get through whatever situation it may be because it's going to be tough out here but we're going to be moving in a, in a different spirit than the world is the world is going to be as but we're like okay let's take a step back and look at the situation okay remember the lord told us that this was going to happen he also told us don't be worrying about this shit dog this isn't for you to be worried about. It's for these motherfuckers to worry about. The Lord told us that. Was that, um... Sirach? Sirach or, or, or um, Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 40, verse 9. It says, Death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. Verse 10. These things are created for the wicked. You see, it's for them. And for their sakes came the flood, right? The first death. And guess what? It's the same thing with the second death, which is the fire. The same thing. It's the same thing uh, uh, with that. And for their sakes came the nuclear war. Okay? For their sakes comes all these things. Famine, scourge, tribulation, violence, a sword. All these horrible things that we see now and are going to increase as, as we get closer to the end. It's for their sakes, the wicked. But it's not for the righteous. The righteous is gonna be is gonna be saved. So we don't gotta worry about none of that. That's for them to worry about. Let's get Second Ezra to sixteenth chapter. Second, oops, yep. Yeah, Second Ezra sixteen verse. Let's go into the end of the chapter. Let's start at verse twenty. I'm sorry, seventy four. 
Second Ezra 16, verse 74. It says, Hear, O ye, my beloved. All right, and that's you brothers and you sisters too. All right, the house of David. All right, the true elect, whoever they may be, the, the ones that are going to understand this. All right, the ones that understand what's going on right now through the Spirit, or at least seeking the understanding and adhering to the counsel that's been given to them by the Holy Prophets. It says, it says, Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Right, the days of trouble is what we prophesy about for the most part here at Great Millstone. Okay, which is going to start with Jacob's trouble, which can happen literally any day now. So I would, we, the, the elder apostle Tahar literally deemed this year the hopeful year of Jacob's trouble. That's how close we are. So if he's saying it, then we're, it's probably going to happen or it's going to happen soon. You know, if it doesn't happen this year, then probably in 2025. But we're hope, the hopeful year of Jacob Trump. You see how you put hopeful year. He wants it to happen. We want it to happen. Because when it happens, and it will, let's keep reading. It says, the Lord said, don't worry about it. The Lord is going to protect us in that, in that time period. Right? Matter of fact, before I read there, let's go into the second chapter of 2nd Ezra and read this, and I'll go back to that if the Lord permits it. 2nd Ezra chapter 2, check this out. Um, uh, verse 26, it says, As for the servants whom I have given thee, there shall not one of them perish, for I will require them from thy number. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shall be merry and have abundance. Okay, so the Lord is telling us that people are going to be out here suffering in the time of trouble. But thou, the servant, right? You, Lord Will and myself, the apostles, the elders, all the brothers out here doing the work, everybody that's fulfilling their role in this thing, okay? We'll have abundance. It says, the heathen shall envy thee. And that goes for the so-called white man. That goes for two-thirds of our own people and anybody else that has a problem with us. Okay, all these non-believers out there, they shall envy us, it says, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, saith the Lord. So as much as they, they're going to hate and want to hurt us, they're not going to be able to do anything against us because the Lord is going to have his protection around us. He's going to have a hedge of protection around his elect. And so they could be mad all they want. They're not going to be able to do anything against the Heavenly Father's elect. Okay, and that's why the scriptures say, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Roughly paraphrasing something along those lines. So the Lord is going to have protection around his elect. Everybody else, however, they're going to know, they, they're going to know at that point that a prophet was among them. They, they're going to know that when when that crazy co-worker was talking about the end of the world, he wasn't just blowing smoke. He was he, he, This was a warning from on high. And you didn't heed to it. So now, now you are going to have to possibly die a painful death. You can read that in 2nd Ezra the ninth chapter. It says, My hand shall cover thee so that thy children shall not see hell. Going back into 2nd Ezra 16, chapter, uh, verse, uh, verse 74 again. It says, Hear, O ye my beloved, save the Lord. Behold, the days of trouble are at hand. But I will deliver you from the same. So we will be delivered from the days of trouble. We don't have to sit here and be scared. Now, if you want to, you, you want to fear anything, fear the Heavenly Father, through His only begotten Son. Understand where these calamities come from. Ultimately, they come from Him. Okay, we can sit here and try to blame Satan on all these things that we see in the world, but really, it's the Heavenly Father that's doing these things. Satan works for the Heavenly Father. Satan is one of the sons of God. Ooh, you know that. So we don't have anything where he's working for the Heavenly Father. Everything is already set up. It's all good. Everything's fine. All we got to do is just fulfill our role. And all the hell that we see on the earth, none of it's going to matter. Okay? Because ultimately the earth is going to be healed after everything is said and done. And you're going to be one of the elect. If you are one of the elect, then you're going to have a role in the earth's uh, basically healing. Because when, when the so-called white man is taken out of power, guess who's the next power to come into play? The Israelites, us. You know, <laughs> as um, HOI, the um, House of Israel, Zabakinam used to always say, we got next. They used to have the t-shirts, we got next. Yeah, that's talking about the Israelites. 
the Israelites have next that rulership. It's not going to be another nation that's going to rise up after America falls, like the Russians, which are just more Edomites. They're not going to rise up and, and rule the earth. No, that's silly. Obviously not. There's going to be angelic beings in in, in, the, in the sky. There's going to be UFO, big big ass spaceships flying everywhere. They could, they're just going to. I mean, they just got over a, a World War Three, which is a nuclear war, and and, and then it, tur it turned into a realm against realm. No, everybody's going to be on their best behavior. Ain't nobody going to try to buck up against the heavenly Father and his angels. All right, so stop it with that that narrative. That's not going to happen. What's going to happen is that the Israelites are going to rule next. And the Israelites are going to be perfected. We're going to be given new bodies. We're going to be given the glory. We're going to be perfect. The Lord's going to consider us his children again. He's going to love us. He's going to give us stuff. He's going to give us everything. He's going to give us our heart's desires. But before that, we have to prove ourselves worthy in his eyes by going through America. If you can't beat America, then you're not worthy of all that. We have to beat this America. This is the last stage in, in the game. This is the hardest level. All right? And the scripture is the only thing that's going to get us through it. We don't need any potions. We don't need any elixirs. Okay? We just need to have the Spirit of the Lord on us. The Spirit of the Lord is all those things. You know, it's about like you play, you get a phoenix down and all that. The Spirit of the Lord, the, the Holy Spirit is all that. For those of you who know what I'm talking about. Second Corinthians 16, verse uh, 75. It says, be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God, Yahweh, is your guide. That should give you comfort because it's easy to get afraid out here. Okay? I get afraid sometimes. Sometimes I, 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 you get that demon on you, you start fucking getting scared like something's going to happen to you. Or the Lord's just going to fuck everybody up that you know, you know your whole life is just going to fall apart and fuck you. No, okay, you have to remember these scriptures Scriptures tell us, don't be afraid Don't be afraid of those thoughts Those heavy thoughts What's it say in the, in the 14th chapter of 2nd Edges? I know I keep quoting 2nd Edges 2nd uh, Edges 14, verse 14 It says, let go from the mortal thoughts You see that? Cast away the burdens of man Cast those thoughts away It says, put off now the weak nature Put it off that's not gonna. That's not gonna uh, um, benefit you. Okay, that's not gonna profit you in these last days. Being all wishy washy, all scared and worried, and timid, and oh, I don't know, the Lord's gonna kill me. I don't want nobody like that around me. That's for sure. I don't want anybody around me that that thinks the Lord's gonna kill them. <laughs> okay. No, the Lord is merciful too. Like you forgot about that part. Yes, we understand the Lord is capable of destroying us. Yeah, that's where the fear of the Lord comes in. So if you fear the Lord, what are you going to do? You're going to do everything the Lord told you to do. So if you're doing everything the Lord told you to do to the best of your ability, of course you're not going to be perfect. We're not Yahweh Shah. We're not going to be perfect down here in the flesh. But if you're trying, you put in a good effort, okay? And I use the word good sparingly or, you know, loosely. Okay, if you're doing a good effort, you put in, you're putting forth a good effort. You're trying, okay? You really truly believe in the Lord. When you get scared of the stuff, you you you... You know, you really are fearing the Lord Then it, the Lord's not going to put you through that shit, man Because, again, that's for the wicked That's not for us to be worrying about the Lord fucking destroying you Destroying us We over here serving the Lord And the Lord's going to fucking give, you know, give you a heart attack You're driving the car and give you a heart attack on the freeway You fucking flip this car into the, into the Peace River or some shit And drown to death Okay, well, that will happen to a wicked guy, I'm sure um, but it says, put off now the weak nature and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy onto thee and haste thee to flee from these times, right? Set aside the thoughts that are most heavy onto thee. Okay, when those thoughts start creeping into your psyche, uh, okay, remember remember this scripture. Okay, remember second verse of the second chapter. Okay, when, when, when trouble or heaviness cometh, the Lord going to deliver us. So we, we know it's coming. But we're, and we're bracing ourselves for, for the impact by what? Doing this work and basically submerging ourselves in the word. Okay? Forget everything else going on in the world. We take care of our daily duties, you know, whatever. And, and the Lord provides us our daily bread. We take care of our family. Okay? We take, take care of our responsibilities as men. Okay? 
We do these things. We do it. Yeah, we fall short sometimes, but then, you know, the Lord gives us a leg up sometimes. And we help the next brother out. Maybe a brother's going through something. Now you got to go out of your pocket to help this brother. That's, but you're doing it because you would want somebody to do that for you if if the the case was re reciprocated. You want that to be done on you. You want a brother to come and help you out. Sometimes, you know, Jake being a humble spirit and be like, nah, I don't need no help. But really, that's not humility. That's sometimes that'd be pride. I don't need no help. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you do. Just, just admit it, bro, and let the brother help you. Because when that, when you let that brother help you, then if you be a man of the Lord and that brother helped you, then that brother's doing a good work in the eyes of the Lord. Okay? Let him get, let it, give that brother an opportunity to help you. Especially if he's, you know, he has his hand extended. And I'm guilty of that sometimes. Sometimes I don't know how to just accept the help, you know. And forgive me for that. You know, I'm not trying to be a hypocrite. But, yeah, you know, sometimes, you know, your boy be guilty of that shit. Jake offers something and he's like, nah, I'm all right. So, you know, just understand, understand why these things are happening. Why are you in this body to begin with? Okay. But, yeah. It says, set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee and haste thee to flee from these times. Okay. Why? Why? Let's read the next verse. It says, for yet greater evils than those which thou hast seen happen shall be done hereafter. So it's going to get a lot worse than the things that you currently see with your eyes today. Yeah. So if you're scared now, then, oh boy, you better hold on to your seat because it's about to get a lot worse. That, that's why the faith and the hope and the oldest thing come into play. Just know that the Lord got you. Don't sit back. Don't be sitting here worrying about all the stuff you keep hearing from Great Millstone. You I don't know. Some that the Heavenly Father, and just know that the Heavenly Father, well, I, you know. Damn it. Satan. Okay, we're back. Yeah, man, but the Lord, he gonna put us, to, he gonna, he gonna try us. Okay? We're all being tried, even a little hell that you go through today. Okay, this is a trial of your faith. Just know that the Heavenly Father is gonna take care of it. If you're doing what, you spo what you're supposed to do, just know that the Heavenly Father is gonna take care of your little problems. Easy ass problem to take care of. You just pray on it. Okay? easy it's easy for the lord to take care of shit though and trust me we know because we see how the lord lord just takes care of the little problems that be be plaguing us you praying on you doing the right thing in the eyes of the lord the next thing you know the lord took look oh man call boom something happened now this money problem that you that was in the back of your mind you was worrying about it but then you cast it over to the lord now you don't got to worry about it no more because then money came through somehow something happened now you got the money you see what I'm saying? It ain't always about money. It could be anything. Whatever is playing in your mind. Okay? What's it? Psalm 55 and 22. That's another one. But um, let's go back and say that 2nd Ezra 16. 2nd Ezra 16 verse 75 again. It says, Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. For God, Yahweh, Hashem Yahweh Shai is your guide. So if we got Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai on our, on our side, the rest of the world don't. We got the Lord on our side. We're good. We don't got nothing to worry about. We we're locked in. We got the seatbelt on. We're strapped in. You know they got the the you know the, the you you go on a roller coaster and they put that that gate over you like this. Oh, we strapped in. We ready to go. Everybody else out here fucking around. down and let not your iniquities lift up themselves right so the heavenly father is a guide of them who keep his commandments and precepts and we keep the lord's commandments and, 
and not, you know, I'm saying not show no doubt. Again, the scriptures tell us not to doubt. Tell us not to be afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared of that. These things are created for the wicked. It's not created for the righteous. Okay? We're, we're, we're moving on the path of righteousness, not wickedness. Okay? And if you really truly believe that, then these words should comfort you. So should they not? You know what I'm saying? Uh, matter of fact, um, um, you know what? I'll leave it there because it's just going to get too long. Maybe I'll do a, another lesson with some other scriptures. But, uh, you know, with that, I'll go ahead and end it there. Let's give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachak, Wadash. And also, let's give double honors unto the apostles of GMS, Great Millstone, the men that rule and teach well. Salutations to the came out there pushing the word out in truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the brothers and your sisters out there listening and learning. And Yahweh Shemiah